giving people a glimpse into Minneapolis history through the eyes of a young musical icon. While we all had a feeling who this young boy might be, we knew we needed help from those who knew him best. It's a journey and story you'll only see here on WCCO. Deep in the WCCO film archives are hundreds, if not thousands, of opportunities to travel back in time. And on one reel, a treasure lay hidden, untouched for 52 years. April 1970, Minneapolis Public Schools educators went on strike. We restored the film to offer context to the educator strike that happened in the same district just last month. Okay, so there's the governor's mansion. That's kind of cool. Matt Liddy is WCCO's production manager. I grew up in Minneapolis, so all I cared about was looking at cool old buildings from the place I grew up. But his curiosity turned into a discovery when he saw a reporter interviewing kids as teachers picketed in the background. And it was this young boy jumping around and later answering a question who left Liddy speechless. So then I, I immediately just went out to the newsroom and started showing people and saying, I'm not going to tell you who I think this is, but who do you think this is? And every single person, Prince. We didn't have the right equipment to hear the film, so a specialist helped us extract the audio, and then we heard his voice. Are most of the kids in favor of the picketing? Yep. How come? Um, I think they should get a better education too, cause, um, and I think they should get some more money, cause they work be working extra hours for us and all that stuff. Our excitement was palpable, but... We did not get him saying, I'm Prince Nelson. Cue our investigation. And that's all I feel. My name is Ronnie Kitchen. We gotta find him. Ronnie Kitchen. Surely he could confirm our quest. Hi, this message is for Ronnie Kitchen. But the phone numbers and addresses we found were dead ends. I hear something in the background, but there's no one there. How about a picture? A yearbook photo showing Prince as a fifth grader popped up online. He would have been 10 or 11 in this picture, and he would have been 11 during the strike, which is when that interview happened. We needed an I just heard back from Kristen. Uh, she's a historian when it comes to Prince. A dedicated fan. What Skipper. Yeah. who used her professional research skills to piece together the Purple One's life. I've written a big document sort of outlining his historic journey from Minneapolis's north side to Paisley Park and the world. Kristen Schaumler says videos of Prince as a preteen are almost non-existent. Until now, she's seen the clip here for the first time. Oh, I think that's okay. it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, yeah. And this definitely looks like um, Lincoln Junior High School, where he would have been attending school in April of 1970. Jamler then showed us what is believed to be a sixth grade picture of Prince, the same school year of the strike. Yeah, there's so much in his mannerisms and his eyes and everything, but it looks like him. Despite the evidence, we still needed someone who knew Prince as a kid. Jamler connected us with Terrence Jackson. We go back as far as kindergarten at John Hale Elementary in North Minneapolis. A childhood friend and neighbor who was also in Prince's first band, Grand Central, when they were teenagers. Oh my God, that's Kitchen. Running, that is Prince. <laughs> Standing right through the hat on, right? Yeah, keep watching, keep watching. That's Skipper! Oh my God! <laughs> that was just his reaction seeing Prince. Now, he's hearing him. Wow. I think they should get a better education too. Cause, wow. Um, That's it. Wow, that was him. What do you, uh. <sighs> what do you... <laughs> I'm like blown away and flabber. Totally, I'm totally blown away. Wiping away tears, Jackson was suddenly flooded with memories. But he was already playing guitar and keys by then, phenomenally. As far as I can remember, music became our sport. Cause we were, he was athletic, I was athletic, but we, we wanted to compete musically. Jackson's wife, Rhoda, <laughs> grew up right alongside them. It's just amazing to see him, that, that small, that young, and hear his voice. Yep. Our mystery regarding one of the most mysterious men in music was solved. That's Prince, AKA Skipper to the North Side. And I think I just think seeing Prince as 
a young child in his neighborhood school. You know, it helps really ground him to that Minneapolis connection. Just a young city kid, years before he put his city and its sound on the map. It mark my words, you guys have found a, a, a real gem. A gem indeed. <laughs> you know, the skipper part is the part that made me nostalgic and almost because no matter how big you get, those people who knew you when you were a kid, yeah. everyone was a kid once. And so the fact that they see it and they don't say, oh, it's Prince. They say, oh, it's Skipper. That gave me chills because you start somewhere. Everyone starts somewhere. Kristen confirmed it when she said they used to call him Skipper. We're looking mm -hmm. at baby photos. And he was immediately drawn to call him that because mm -hmm. that was his friend. It wasn't Prince, the musician icon. It was his yeah. buddy down the block. They were in bands together. And uh, I, I've said this before, we were excited to tell the story, but every time we showed that video to someone who's a huge Prince fan or was his friend, it just raised our excitement level. And we hope the people watching here felt the same.